Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Roshock, and if you're a returning viewer, you'll notice this setup is very different. Got a new backdrop here, I've changed the office around, but it is tax time, and I wanted to touch base on three of the most common mistakes that I'm seeing people make when they're either lodging their own tax return or when they're coming to me and having a lack of understanding about how tax works. So let's jump right into that today. So as I said in the intro there, I want to cut off the three most common mistakes people are having when it comes to their tax returns. And these are common across people doing their own return or when they're coming to me as a tax agent. They're just not understanding or getting these few things right and it's really warping their perception of what their refund may be or it's resulting in their return they're actually lodging being incorrect and running a huge risk of an audit and adjustments being made. So the first one I would say would have to be not including all income. And this happens quite typically when people are lodging early because not all the information has come through to the ATO. So at the time of recording this, we've now gone past the 14th of July deadline when employers should have these details of their employees' earnings finalized with the ATO. But there are other things you may be waiting on such as interest income or whether you haven't included a rental property that has income attached to it or maybe it's dividends or maybe it's some capital gains events. You need to include income from all sources and you can't just rely on that ATO pre-fill. So what's the risk if you don't include income? Well, you're at a high risk that the ATO doesn't order, especially if this data gets fed into them at a later date. And this could be three, six, 12 months down the track that they go, we've received information that you earned this income, for instance, interest income, you didn't include it in your tax return, and unless you can prove otherwise, we will be amending your return to these updated figures and obviously if you've missed out on including income, it is normally going to result in a tax debt to you. So that is the number one mistake that people make is they don't include all income from all sources. The second one is not understanding how deductions work. So this is impacting people when they come to an accountant because they have an unrealistic expectation of what they're going to be able to claim, or if they're lodging themselves and they put these things through and then they get an audit and then it all falls apart because they've claimed things they shouldn't. So things like car, not understanding how to claim car expenses. So if you want a more in-depth video, I've done that, go watch that video. But people coming to me and going, oh yeah, I want to claim for wear and tear of my car and not having any idea how to calculate it. So that lack of understanding of how things work from a deduction point of view can quite typically mean either it doesn't get included because they've got no record, so they haven't kept track of kilometers, or potentially do they include the wrong thing? Do they go and include fuel amounts at the car expenses when they're using the cents per kilometer method? or they use the cents per kilometer method and also claimed servicing on their car in another section. So people can easily get things wrong in deductions and it's a major area that the ATO are always focusing on and it's a lot easier for them to pick up mistakes because they can compare you against them, someone else in your same industry and your same occupation. So something with deductions is you need to understand what's applicable for your occupation but also you need to have spent the money. So people will go, oh yeah, I just claim the maximum you can on tools. But it's like, well, if you haven't spent anything on tools, you can't claim anything. So people have this misconception that they can claim $300 for every single item. They are $300 for tools, $300 for uniforms, $300 for donations, and this just isn't true. And if you get an audit done, the ATO will want to see your $300 receipt for your tools, your $300 receipts for your uniforms, your $300 receipt for your donations. So having that understanding that, okay, yes, I do need a receipt, what to keep through the year, is definitely a lot simpler way of making sure that you get your deductions right. And then the third area, another key thing, is people just don't understand how tax works. So a common one is people will come to me and go, oh, how come I'm not getting more back? And it's like, you're getting all the tax back you paid you're under the tax-free threshold. It doesn't matter how much you've got to claim, you can only get the tax you pay back. So that lack of understanding of the basics of how a tax return works definitely impacts and therefore people get things wrong. And it might not necessarily mean that they lodge wrong, but they're telling the wrong information to a friend or they're complaining about an accountant that hasn't got them enough back when there was no physical way for them to get more back. So another key area people get really confused is Medicare levy and Medicare levy surcharge, getting the two confused, not really understanding how they work, why nearly everyone pays the Medicare levy, how to avoid the Medicare levy surcharge, what you could have done, why it may be too late to do anything about by the time you lodge your return. Just some of those basic different things that we have in tax returns that it's a good idea to have a good understanding of. You don't need to know it to the finest details, but to have that basic understanding that when you lodge your return, you understand what the different taxes you're potentially paying that make up that final amount will make it much clearer when you go and lodge your return. And another key one is tax brackets. There's so many misinformation around this. I'm going to do a more in-depth video talking about tax brackets in the future. 
So make sure you have hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button so that you stay notified when I do drop new videos. But understanding how tax brackets work, how it is a progressive thing, that you're not going to get taxed a huge amount of money extra just because you've gone $1 into a new bracket. That's not how it works. We just have different rates. They change over time. You'll see them on the screen here showing the different marginal rates. But again, having these basic understanding of how tax withheld works, how our marginal rate system works, will make it much clearer when you're doing your return and you're not gonna make those mistakes or that lack of understanding and not have an unrealistic expectation of what your refund could be. So there are three of the common areas that I see people going wrong with their returns and they're a combination of getting the return wrong or going into it with a lack of understanding of how it's gonna work. And that can have flow on effects. People can go in thinking, oh, I'm gonna get $4,000 back and then they only get 1,000 and it completely ruins their budget. So it's not just about an audit that goes wrong, it may be that misconception of how much refund they're actually gonna get and maybe haven't spent it before they actually knew what they were getting. So I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any suggestions on other content you want me to cover, drop a comment down below. I do appreciate you watching the video. As I said earlier, make sure you've hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and go and check out some of the other tax-based videos I've got. And I'll talk to you again on the next video. Thank you.